Wow. Please stand for the reading of the word. Book of John, chapter number 7, verses 37 through 39. On the last and most important day of the festival, Jesus stood up and shouted, All who are thirsty should come to me. All who believe in me should drink. As the scripture said concerning me, rivers of living water will flow out from within him. Jesus said this concerning the spirit. Those who believed in him would soon receive the spirit, but they hadn't experienced the spirit yet since Jesus hadn't yet been glorified. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Man, it's been powerful. It's been inspirational. It's been spiritual. It's been touching. And it's been encouraging. Lord, I pray for this time that I get to share amongst your people. I ask for God to help us all better understand what it is that you desire for us within this passage of scripture to receive. Help us all, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, come. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. The water is just fine. For me, one of the most fascinating things to observe, and for humans to have, have access to is a natural spring. It is amazing to me that below the surface where our natural eyes cannot see, water goes through a filtration process. And with time and within time and with pressure, the groundwater makes its way up to the earth's surface. It's awesome to see the water moving and to hear the water pass through and by rocks, which reminds us all of life with peace and satisfaction. And oh, to be able to take a drink of this type of water, my, 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 one will discover that it is cold and refreshing, which will trigger all of one's senses to the point to all that they can do after drinking that is say, ah. It is humbling, church, to realize that these sweet spots where spring water comes out from above the earth's surface have been given to us and for us to enjoy, to help us have health and to be satisfied. In our text this morning, Jesus was hanging out with some people at a gathering known as the Festival of Tab Tabernacles which is similar to our annual gathering in the Gap. How many went to the gathering yesterday? Amen. I'm sure you had a good time. And that only lasts a day, doesn't it? The Festival of Tabernacles lasted up to seven and eight days, or eight days. And during these gatherings, the people abandoned their occupations, to celebrate God and each other through the sharing of stories, good foods, and wonderful music and worship. People also would tally and report and gather for protection and storage all of the harvest. These were some of the ways the people celebrated the end of a rainless, rainless summer and the end of the farm season. 
But it's important to know there were two main traditions that were observed. First were, was that uh, people who attended and participated in the festival were required to build little booths to sleep in every night instead of sleeping in the Grand Hotel. Amen. And they did this because it was a way for them to humble themselves and to remind them of their humble beginnings of their ancestors. Because they didn't always have it good, amen. Their ancestors had to go through a lot of trials and tribulations to get them to the, the, the time of prosperity that they lived in. And this also would help them be grateful for all that the Lord had done for them. Also, every day the priest would draw water from a spring to be poured on the altar within the temple for worship. And this was done as a way to thank God for providing water for their ancestors years ago while, the, while they were in the desert. Another reason why they did this was a way for them to thank God for the life that he provided for them. And also a way for them to acknowledge before God and their peers that they all anticipated that one day God would send them more life. Since they knew that the Messiah was coming. So it is believed, church, that while this worship took place, that Jesus said, hey guys, Look no further. I am the one. I am the source of life that you all have been anticipating for generations. And church, notice here that Jesus said that the life that will come from him is like a rushing river that has been purified. You know, there is a difference between a little spring and a river, amen? There's a difference between standing in the middle of some drizzling rain and standing in a downright downpour. There is a difference between a few ounces of water in a gallon of water. What Jesus was saying, church, that the life that he will give will completely saturate your entire being, your soul, your mind, your body, your spirit. It reminds me of the song that we learn at Bible camp, amen? And I can only imagine these words coming from Jesus in this passage of scripture. When he said, I've got a river of life flowing out of me. It makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Opens prison doors and set the captives free. I've got a river of life pouring out of me. And our response should be out, spring up, oh well, within my soul, spring up, oh well, it make me whole, spring up, oh well, woo and give to me that life abundantly. Do you desire that life? It's within reach. You know what that tells me, church, that every time we meet for worship, or for a funeral, or even for a meeting, or even just to hang out with each other in his name, joy should be talked about. The joy of the Lord should be experienced 
and the joy of the Lord should be received because that's what Jesus is all about. What he was saying is that when you believe in me, what's going to be released from me to you is true, authentic joy. And that peace, church, is available to us. Amen? Love is available to us. Purpose is available to us. Assurance is available to us. And our future, even though it may be, appear to be cloudy, is secure because we have the good shepherd with us. The good shepherd and who will lead us to greener pastures. And if I find myself crying late at night, I do not need to worry myself to death because God is with me. I know that joy will come in the morning. Give God some praise in this place. So how about you this morning? Has your relationship with Jesus gone dry? My favorite song, one of them at least. I have, is it okay to have favorites? The song, Water Runs Dry. Amen. It was released in 1995 and by a group called Boys to Men. If I disappointed you that I didn't mention a hymn, just get over it. Amen. <laughs> it's not a Christian song. But it is a song that talks about how relationships between people can lose its joy and stability because it can become dry. Within the lyrics it says this particular couple's relationship became dry because they didn't talk anymore. They got to the point where they argued so much they even didn't even know why they were arguing with each other. They failed to say to each other that they love one another. And they didn't even share how they feel with each other. And it goes on to encourage the people, don't wait until the water runs completely dry and make the biggest mistake of your lives. When things can simply be worked out for the better, but realize it may also require one to change. Now church, from time to time, our relationships with Christ may go dry. Can I say an amen? Can I hear an amen? All right, we got a bunch of witnesses today. Because unfortunately, we may refuse to talk to him. We may fail to tell him how much we love him. And sadly, we may get so busy that we fail to genuinely share our hearts with him. But you know what? The good news is this. Our relationships with Jesus do not have to be dry. Since Jesus is the forever life-given source for us today. And all that we have to do is simply receive him. So church, the water is just fine for us to drink. Amen. If your relationship has gone dry with Christ... Ask yourself, what is preventing you from experiencing his life-given power? Perhaps it's heartaches, perhaps it's sickness, perhaps it's doubt, perhaps it's fear. But I'm here to encourage us all that we are connected to the most powerful source that anyone could be connected with. And once we taste of his water, amen, we should never go thirsty again. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, 
the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you would like to have special prayer, we give you the opportunity to come and pray for whatever uh, may be in your heart as we sing our last hymn.